Hi, Libra, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your October 31st, 2020 full moon reading for you. Now, I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be located in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body, like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, steady, and at peace as you enter into the safe and loving space. All right. Let's let the bulls sing. As I move your moonology and your queen of the moon cards over to the side, these will be layered on top of the tarot to really give the moon a voice of her own. And this will be done at the end. And let's see what the tarot has to say. How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading. Oh, goodness. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. There we go. Okay. Now the left-hand side is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side is the public arena, the public self. And right here, this is the moon and the moon up to the next full moon on November 30th and the spirit animal. So we'll get to those in just a moment. So let's see what the cards have to say. Eight of Pentacles, Libra, your hard work is really paying off. You have the Queen of Pentacles absolutely connecting you with this full moon in Taurus, which is absolutely beautiful. This full moon that we are going into on the 31st hasn't been seen in 19 years. So you are having a very strong connection to not only the full moon in Taurus, but also to the blue moon and the fact that this moon comes on Shawin on Halloween, where the veil between our world and the spirit world is the thinnest. So that's really quite beautiful. The Wheel of Fortune, okay, things are changing. The Page of Wands, passion, fire, determination, being a student of that passion, of that fire. We have the Nine of Wands, okay, the hard work, is also with the heart. You're, you're taking what everybody has to say to heart. You have to balance it out with what it is that you truly want. I love how it goes down nine of wands to the eight of wands. And this is a sense of things moving quickly. It's kind of like ready or not, here it comes. It's like ready or not, this moon comes at you. It comes at you hard. It comes at you fast. And it comes at you powerfully. And then you have the sun right here. And what is the moon but the reflection of the sun's light? And so that is really changing things for you. This is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. And as you move forward, you're really going to be held back, you know, yeah, kind of, 
you're going to get so far and then you're going to say, oh no, I can't do that. Like, oh no, that's just not me. Like, I can't move forward that way. And it's going to be over the hurts, the pains, the disappointments that other people spoke over you. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> we, yeah, there's a need here to move, to move forward from it because it's that always that little bit of a nasty voice that, you know, talks in your head that says, oh no, you can't move forward this way. Oh no, you can't have this. Oh no, you can't do that. And then you have the ace of pentacles, which is a gift from God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, that you are absolutely taking. Oh, I love it. You have the king of pentacles. So whenever I have the king and the queen of pentacles or the king and the queen of the same suit from the same, from the same deck in a reading, that's a soulmate connection, a true love connection. And then you have the Taurus energy coming right through. So this is a very heavy hitter and it's balancing the scales. It's saying here, I need the scales balanced for me to be able to move forward, to be able to be a student of my passion, to be able to see what it is that I desire from my life. And it's a game changer. It literally is a game changer for you. And this is so cool. So with the full moon in Taurus, this is a powerful time for you. This is a time where it's like, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is where I'm heading. And it says your dreams need a practical plan. And they do. Because in order to have dreams become reality, we can't just sit there, cross our fingers and say, oh, I wish, I hope, you know, maybe one day it will. It's like, no, it's time to take the steps forward in your life to achieve your, your dreams, to kind of plan things out. And it might not be practical to anyone else, but as long as it's practical to you, as long as it's powerful to you, that's what this moon is really bringing forward. It's also the most solid and sensual of the moons, which is always something very beautiful to have that sensuality in your life, but also that solidity, that sense of I'm standing firmly on the ground. I'm leaving my footprints behind. I'm walking forward in determination and making a path for myself. And as you have this, the blue moon comes in and it says, believe in the impossible. So believe in the impossible because you're, you're cultivating patience, okay? And I know some of you are going to sit there and say, I've been cultivating patience my whole entire life. You know, why do I have to be doing it now? But it's like, nothing is impossible. It's just the timing is off. Or you might be looking at things in one very specific way. And if you change the view just a bit, if you kind of turn things around for you, you're going to move past what is, what is blocking you. And this is a real time to look at our power, ourselves, and taking time out to kind of call ourselves out just a little bit, you know, and say, okay, well, how do I build the power to move forward? How do I embrace my grace and go after what I desire? And this stubbornness of the full moon in Taurus comes forward. And it's not in a hurry to change everything, though at times you will want to very much balance the scales. We have the minor arcana, okay, justice card right here, which is you in the minor arcana with the six of pentacles. You're going to want to balance the scales. And you might sit there and some of you Libras are going to get so frustrated where it's like, I'm just going to tip everything over and I'm going to start again. It's like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Sit back, look at things, get comfortable. Either take out a journal, you know, just start thinking, have a conversation with your angels out loud in a journal. It doesn't matter. Whichever way feels more natural to you and start seeing where it is that you want to be. Because especially on Shawin, especially on Halloween, it's facing fears and difficult truths. And it's saying, okay, I'm not going to be held back by this anymore. You are releasing what is no longer serving you in your life. And as you do so, this is a time to connect with ancient wisdom. This is a time where you can really feel yourself connecting with your ancestors, all right? Especially if your ancestors here are, are Taurus energy, okay? That person is going to be forefront in your existence or just somebody who really was this stubborn, down-to-earth, dedicated person that sunk their feet in and said, I'm going to make it. And this is how. You're really going to be channeling that energy during this time. And it's really going to be very beautiful and very powerful for you. Now, as you do this, you surrender to the divine and that's where your power comes from. It's kind of like not in my time, but in divine time. And it doesn't mean that we sit back, eat chips and, you know, think, oh, okay, everything will be fine. But it's that we sit there and say, there is a bigger plan. And whether you believe that or not, it does kind of bring a bit of an ease to life and to self and to grace of understanding and, you know, connection with our souls to say there is a bigger plan instead of being rather nihilistic and saying nothing happens for a reason. Everything is just chaos. And why do I even bother? Because that's very discouraging. So here your power is in that balance of the practical and the spiritual, the 
the balance of what we are passionate about and what needs to be done in order for us to move forward. And that's going to be very powerful for you here, Libra. And it moves you into the, the new moon in Scorpio on the 15th of, of November. So on the 15th of November, you move into the new moon in Scorpio. And this is going to be very powerful, especially if you have a lot of Scorpio in your chart or if you know, you're born on the cusp with Scorpio. So this says, work through your fears, which is really what Shawin is having us do. It's having us work through our, our fears. It can make us emotionally rather tumultuous during that time. It's like, okay, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of upheaval. And as we look at things, as we, we see our fears and as we address them and say, you know what, you don't get the negativity that others have spoken over us, the negativity that has wounded our hearts. They don't get to be in the forefront of our minds, of our hearts anymore. They don't get to be the foundation of our emotional self that has brought us to our needs. That's going to be something where you're really sitting there, Libra, and saying, no, no, because this is a beginning. This is a beginning of me embracing my power. This is a beginning of me moving forward in my truth. This is a beginning. And as it is a beginning, you know a new start is coming because it's a time of reflection. It's a time of not having a spotlight shown on you, but having a time to sit back in the quiet, in the grace, in the compassion, in the understanding of what you desire, what you need, and what you want to move you forward. And you're really going to be going for the poison. And this, what Spirit is showing me is like, you are taking out the poison from your life and you're saying, no, I'm done with this. I am done with this. And I will not be moving forward in this poison, in this poison, in this toxic, you know, environment for my heart, my soul, myself. And it doesn't mean that you have to change anything, though it could mean that. It could very well. But it means that you are not fortifying yourself in negativity. It's not, I'll prove or they'll be right type of thing. It's a, well, it's a little bit of I'll prove you wrong mentality because I always think that's very, very good, that bit of fire in us to keep us going. But it's, you don't get to dictate my future, I do. And the full moon in Taurus is going to be a time where you like to be wrapped up in your favorite cozy blanket. You know, you like to have that nice cup of tea or cocoa or coffee, whatever it is that makes you feel calm and comfortable and, and snuggy. You know, you want to sit there being able to reflect on you. You know, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting cold. You know, you, you need to have that connection with, with your inner self because there's that quiet that comes forward in the winter months. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, spring is has come or is, is coming and you're, you're going to want to be able to plant new seeds within your heart, within your soul, within yourself. And it moves you on November 30th, it moves you to the answers you need are coming. It's like, oh wow. And the new moon on the 30th of November is also a lunar eclipse. And this says conclusions are within reach. You are reaching the conclusions because the answers you need are coming. And it's like, it hits you all at once and then very slowly it guides you forward. It's like, oh wow, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect the answers to be like this. I didn't expect, you know, kind of it to speak so plainly. It's going to speak plainly. I'm just seeing here, it's kind of like, okay. So I'm seeing cups and it's very much like with the three of cups. Sometimes the, the plainest cup is going to hold the most power for us, but it's a very plain cup. It's almost like a bowl, a very primitive first cup. But then you have the cups that are goblets. They are ornate. They can be crystal. They can be gold. They can be, you know, inlaid with jewels but it is the sturdy, plain cup that is going to make the biggest difference. So it is the sturdy, plain love that you are pouring into your heart, your soul, yourself, that is going to bring the greatest answers. And it's not going to be all glitzy, all glamorous, the way that we, we kind of are drawn to as individuals, but it's going to be something much more simple, much more plain, and much more down to earth. Now for one day, one day, your spirit animals during this time are completely contrasting and completely beautiful. So you have the crow spirit and you have the dove spirit. The crow spirit says co-create with spirit. The dove spirit says be peace. So you have this co-creating with spirit for you to be peace. And you cannot have, well, I mean, probably you could, but there aren't two much more contrasting birds than a crow and a dove. A crow is called, a flock of crows is called a murder of crows. And I very much believe that in our subconscious memory, okay, of of our past lives, of our ancestral memory. Crows signify death and destruction because they came on the battlefields after we slaughtered each other. The dove signifies peace, signifies hope, 
especially the white dove, whether it was used for sacrificial rites, whether it was what brought the olive leaf to, you know, know it, however you, you see it. It is, it is a symbol of peace and of purity of intention. So you have these contrasting imagery, one of hope and one of fear. But the crow, we shouldn't fear the crow. The crow is actually astoundingly smart. I believe it can also, you know, mimic the sounds of other birds. It is simply its nature, which it eats, you know, flesh. It just, it's, it's a carnivore. So here, there is that sense of being off put by the nature of something. And so answers are coming, but the nature in which they come to us can be a little bit off-putting. And the crow signifies change. We're not going to be really into change in the full moon in Taurus. We're going to want things to be steady and stable and cozy and right. Scorpio is like pulling out the poison from within us. Gemini, yeah, Gemini, we want change. We want the answers. We have this mercurial mindset of, you know, questions, of seeking, of discovering. And so here with the crow spirit, it brings forward change that we might be a little bit resistant to. So just note that. It also brings forward sacred law sacred law of nature, sacred law of our souls, of ourselves, of the way that we move forward. It's trusting in our personal integrity and our truth. It's like, live your truth. If you live your truth, it will be so much better than if you either live somebody else's truth or you try to make your truth what other people want it to be. And then as you speak your truth, you're going to see a personal transformation come about. It's like, oh, this is my authenticity. This is where I stand. And then messages come to you. And you're able to see them more because you're living in your truth and they coincide and correlate to your truth. And then the peace comes. And the peace of the dove brings messages of peace and of hope to us, especially with hurting hearts, with broken hearts. And whose heart during this time, during the chaos in the world, isn't just a little bit broken? You know, everything is, is so different. You know, so who doesn't have a bit of a broken heart? And then it is moving forward in gentle compassion. And it is releasing us from the pain that holds us back. So both of these are purifying. Both of these give us wings, even though they seem so terribly contrasting. And then we have the spirit animals of October. And the spirit animals of October are all about healing, healing and bringing your ideas to life and bringing to light what you desire, what you're passionate about, what you want, what you need. So the snake spirit here says time to heal. And the eel spirit says bring your ideas to life. And with the snake spirit, you know, we don't always think of the snake as healing. Though the snake is the Asclepian, I'm, I hope I'm saying that right, is the Asclepian, which is the staff of, of healers, of, of doctors, you know, that has the two snakes intertwined. And it was, you know, yeah, the, sna the, the staff of healing from ancient Greece, I believe. And then we also have the snake as the tempter, you know, the snake as the one that caused man to fall, you know, within the Bible. It's knowledge. And so here we can heal from knowledge or we can be destroyed by knowledge. And it depends on how we take it in. But also the snake brings forward a bit of vulnerability because when a snake loses its skin, you know, sheds its skin, it becomes vulnerable. It can't see as well. It's a little bit more ready to kind of lash out. And so here we have healing opportunities that bring change, but can also make us feel very uncomfortable because we're leaving a skin behind. We're leaving our old selves behind and we're entering into a new light and into a new time. And we might not very well be seeing as well as we should be during this time because we're going to have this inner war between us, a war of personal conflicts like, okay, I don't want to change. I don't, I don't want to move forward like this. I'll change when I'm good and ready for it. And the sense of needing to change and needing to step out of our comfort zones and see things more openly and more honestly for ourselves. And this is, yeah, this is an important transition. And it leads us to the eel spirit, which has us embrace, embracing our emotions, has us embracing our, our strength and our foresight to look towards the future and to move forward. It's like bring your ideas to life. Let yourself be who it is that you need to be without being in the trappings of what the world says that you should be. Because that's going to be one of the main things that you need to overcome during this time, Libra. It's like, what does the world say you should be? And the thing is, is that words and actions are going to get muddled together. Here, you'll have people who say all the nice words. They say all the pretty words, exactly what we want to hear. But then their actions are complete opposite. And then you'll have people who sit there and they might challenge you a bit. They might say, no, I'm not doing this. And what do you mean? And, you know, but their actions are more loving, more caring, more compassionate. Okay. And that's going to be 
a good place for you to see things. It's like actions speak louder than words. So don't get caught up all the time in implications or in the words that people are saying. Look at their actions and judge off of that because you're going to see in your inner self what you're working so hard for is coming to life. With the eight of pentacles, it's like hard, heartbreak, heartache, you know, what you've, you've bloodied your fingers with and you've, you've given your life to. It's, you, it's your work. It's, and I'm getting so passionate here because it's what's so terribly important to you. And now it's arching yourself. It's, you know, bringing in your new beginnings. It's also beginnings and endings. During this time, the new moon always makes me think of the god Janus in Roman mythology, the god of beginnings and endings, the god whose name was given to, to January. And so here, it's kind of that mentality. It's that new beginning, that new passion, that new power forward. And it's looking at it and saying, where do I stand? What do I stand for? What have I been working towards? What is it that I want? Because in your inner self, you're going to be much more comfortable behind the scenes. You don't need everybody to see you, but they are going to be very, very powerfully taking note of who you are and how you're moving forward, especially during this moon, especially during the full moon in Taurus. It, it shines a, lot, a light on you, like a spotlight on you in such a way that it has you kind of evolving much more publicly than you would want to, or people taking note of it much more publicly than you would want to. You'd want, you want this to be behind the scenes. You want to look at this, take it in, plant the seeds, look at the different connections, bring things together in a powerful, beautiful way, and then, and then see yourself moving forward. And it's also going to be terribly public, okay? Not, it, not terribly public, but it's more public than you want. Because here, you're taking that crown. You're putting it on your head. You are embracing your prosperity. You're, you're claiming it in the public arena. So there's something about you that seems born under a lucky star. There's a radiance of prosperity and love and, and, and brilliance that is shining on you. And it's going to be something that you don't see quite as easily as others see. But with the Queen of Pentacles, I mean, you're not going to sit there and think of yourself very often during this time as a pauper. You're going to sit there and be like, no, I'm serious, I'm dedicated. Do you have the repeat of the number eight? It's like, I'm serious, I'm dedicated. I'm going after what it is that I want. I will not be held back. You know, you're very much embracing a feminine energy that is around you. And that energy is moving you forward. That energy is really helping you look at things more openly, more honestly for yourself and for what you desire. And it's very personal for you. And that's why here, where things become a little bit more public, because for me, kings are more public than queens. It can be uncomfortable, but it's also going to be something where you step into it more. It's like, it's uncomfortable, yes. Is it powerful and prosperous for you? Absolutely. Is it something that you, you need to step into in order to really fulfill your, your life path during this time? Absolutely. Is it going to come naturally? Not really, not really. But it's beautiful for you, it really is. And so here, you are embracing that prosperity, you're embracing that way of moving forward, and it really is changing things. There's going to be a lot of times during this time period where you feel like you're on a roller coaster ride. You have your highs, your lows, your lefts, your rights, and you're like, man, when is it going to calm down? When is it going to end? Why is it always one thing after another after another? And it's here, it's like, okay, but you have to get to a greater point. And that never comes without hardship, without doubts, without fears, without disappointments, without chaos. And so with the ten of with the ten of the major arcana, with the wheel of fortune, it's entering into a new season. It can be entering into a new season of your life and of yourself, of stepping into a new way of being, a new passion, a new power, a new brilliance. It can be entering into a new season for you in this world. It's kind of like, where do I fit? Where do I stand? What do I stand for? but it makes you into a student. It has you looking at things and not being afraid to ask why. The, the Page of Wands is a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And it is embracing your passion, embracing your power, knowing of what it is that you desire. It is looking at things that excite your heart, that move your soul forward in this passionate brilliance, in this glorious truth. It's like, wow, this is the reason I get out of bed in the morning. And it's questioning everything. You are going to find during this time that you question everything. And remember what Buddha said, question everyone, even me. So no matter who you are questioning, you know, know that your, your questions have validity and know that they, they carry a truth to them to move you forward. 
move you forward to where you want to be, to what it is that you desire, to what it is that you're looking towards and looking for. And you're, you have here the prosperity of a queen. So you have the prosperity of a monarch, you know, just the sense of wealth coming in, these connections, this grounding to the earth, but you have the curiosity of a child. It's like, why? Why not? Why can't I push the envelope? Why can't I move forward this way? Why? And there's going to be times here when you're entering into this prosperity that you feel this conflict. You feel this conflict with what the world is telling you and what you know to be true with the way that you're moving forward. You've also had enough of fights and disappointments and angers and upsets and upheavals, and it has brought you to your knees at times. It really has. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. What you need to know is every warrior needs a break. Everybody does. And you can't be having, you know, that's why you have like one general, right? You have one person commanding and then follow and everybody else follows. You need to be the general of your life, the one person who's commanding. You can't listen to everybody else. Have yourself pulled all these different ways. It's like embrace your truth, understand your knowledge and move forward in it because there's power and there's grace and there is abundance here. Take time to rest, yes. You know, reevaluate where you're going, what you desire, where it is that you want to be, what it is that you want from your life, and then go after it. Then go after it. And have a fence built between you and everybody else. They can give their opinions, absolutely. They can state what they believe to be true, fine. But this is still your life, and you're embracing that power. And it comes at you, this embrace of passion as you, you know, have this new season come in, as you're looking at things differently, it leads you forward. And it's like, ready or not, here it comes. This is a change that cannot be stopped. This is a change that pushes your limits sometimes, that pushes you forward in such a way that you think, oh my gosh, but it's a change that makes you a monarch, that makes you a ruler of your existence, of your power, of your grace, of your passion. And it brings the sun shining down on you. It lets your light shine true. And during this time, because the moon is simply the reflection of the sun, not simply, but one of the things that the moon does, its light is a reflection of the sun. And so you have that quieter, more gentle light reflecting on you. And that's going to be very much a part of your truth during this time, this quiet gentility, okay? This sense of embracing a heart's grace, a heart's emotions, knowing your truth and knowing your passion and knowing what you desire and moving forward, not kind of like a bat out of hell or, you know, a bull in a china shop, but in a very calm, serene, embracing, gracing way. And it lets the sun shine down on you. It lets happiness be a radiant part of your life, your soul, and where it is that you need to be. And as this light shines on you, you shine within your truth. And other people see this so much more easily than you do because you're going to think, oh, okay, I'm happy. You, you, I deserve to be happy. And other people are going to see this as the, the radiance that it is, the power, the beauty, the truth. And they're going to want to take you by eyes. They're going to sit there and say, well, why not me? Because in our world, we have this mentality of lack. It's like, well, if you have it, then I can't have it. And what a terrible way to live. It does not mean that if you live your truth, that another person has to live in despair. It means that they have now a person to look at, a person to see, and say, I can live in my truth too. But that's, that takes evolution, a spirit of understanding, of compassion, of soul. And as your radiance comes forward, and as you're embracing it, and you have people taking you by eyes, it's going to be really, really easy for you, Libra, to sit there and say, you're right, I don't deserve this. I had negativity spoken over me. I was made to feel less than insecure, upset, you know, doubting myself, doubting my straight strength, and I don't get to be who it is that I want to be. And what you're going to see here is that, oh, yes, you do. Oh, yes, you get to be who it is that you want to be. And this is looking at the people who couldn't celebrate you, the people who should have celebrated you, the who said, you know what, I'm on your side, I'm right there with you, and then they couldn't raise their cup during this time, and you're going to see it, see it happening, like people saying one thing and then doing another. That's why there is this, this sense here of, you know, if somebody tells you like, oh no, I, I, I can't possibly, you know, it can't possibly be like this or like that, it has to be this way or that way. Look at their actions afterwards. Like they might need to say something where they feel very strongly about something or other, but then look how they treat you later on. Because what you do not want to fall into the pattern of, 
because it it scars. It scars everybody, all right? But especially you, Libra, who likes to keep the peace, who likes to keep things balanced. It's like, let me embrace my love. And so you'll have somebody who sits there and says, oh yeah, this is great. This is absolutely great. I absolutely support you. I raise my cup to you. But their actions go completely against what their words have said, what they have said. And so here it's going to bring up old memories, old doubts, old fears, and it's going to have you doubting that you can move forward in your love, in your light, in this brilliance. Your heart is going through a transformation. You need to balance it between the world of your spirit, your soul, yourself, and the practical, harsh world that we live in. Sometimes it's not even practical. It's just the, the harsh world that we live in. In the public arena, you are being handed a gift by God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe of prosperity, of success, of bounty, of brilliance, of abundance, of you know being able to plant seeds that you want to grow in your garden. And I love visualizing our lives as gardens. You know, sometimes our gardens get completely overwhelmed, over, overwhelmed, yes, there we go, and like weed covered and it feels like overnight. Sometimes our gardens are too meticulously ordered and it looks like, you know, something out of, I don't know what time period, but like, I'm just thinking of those very ordered, you know, structured gardens in, um, in Versailles where they're just like, <laughs> it's nature, but it's man controlled nature completely. Sometimes they get too much like that. There's a sense here because you have the repeat of the number eight. You can go from extremes. You can go from letting everything kind of develop naturally and have this beautiful flow to it, to things being really rigid and having to be confined and conformed in a certain way. And this gift is going to let you see that there's a time and a place for everything. As this prosperity comes, sometimes our gardens need to be much more contained, much more, you know, proper than maybe at times, more so than at other times. And maybe we're not always comfortable with that, or maybe we're not comfortable with letting our gardens ramble you know, letting them just become. And so here, it's seeing the gifts of both sides and it's seeing the gifts of divinity and being like, oh, okay, I get it. I might not completely get it, but I can hold it because you're definitely taking it in a very big way during this time period. And it's really bringing forward a change in you that at times you're not going to feel that comfortable with because it's stepping into a wealth, it's stepping into a prosperity that you might think, oh, this can't be for me, this isn't me, like I can't move forward this way. Yes, you can. With this Taurus energy that is around you, the guide right here is the Hierophant in the, in the Rider Waite Smith deck. This is you connecting with this full moon in Taurus, absolutely. It really does make you the ruler of your realm. And it calls you forward to say, these are my gifts, these are my talents, this is who I am. I embrace it fully, openly, and honestly. I move forward in my power, in my grace, and in my understanding. I will not be swayed by every, anyone or everyone. You know, nobody gets to tell me how to live my life. It is more powerful than the king and the queen. Because remember, the Hierophant represents the Pope in, in the Rider Waite Smith deck. And the Pope could tell kings and queens what to do. And did tell kings and queens and emperors and empresses what to do. So here you are like this supreme ruler and that supreme ruler energy is balancing the scales. It's saying to people, you cannot always have your hand out. I cannot always give and give and give and get nothing in return. And we all know those people who take, who take. And you sit there and you think, okay, I'm being nice. I'm being nice. I'm being compassionate. I'm being caring. I'm giving, I'm letting. And it's like, no, too much. Don't give it all away. Balance. Balance is needed. And this can be at work. This could be at school. This could be, you know, at home where you're trying to balance the scales, but you're giving too much of yourself. It doesn't mean to be stubborn and ornery and say, oh, it has to be like this. It's like, no, but it has to be balanced. And if you come to things as a balanced individual of self, that balance will perpetuate. And that's really what you're looking at during this time. It's embracing that balance. It's embracing a change that's coming forward, a transformation. You're shedding a skin. You're entering into a new light and into a new life of prosperity, of wealth the way divinity defines it for you. Maybe not the way that you've always dreamt it to be, you know, scratching off that winning lottery ticket and then just all of a sudden rolling in the money. It can be, it, it, and it most likely is. And yeah, for, and it says it right here with the eight of 
of Pentacles. It's through hard work. It's through discipline. It's through dedication. It's through looking at things and saying, well, I'm getting nothing, you know, going this route. I'm going to try this route. And it's it's looking at different connections. And it's it's seeing yourself more openly and more honestly. And it's being astoundingly truthful. And it's connecting with the spirit realm and connecting with your ancestors. And, you know, embracing their stubbornness, embracing their grace, but also leaving sometimes some of it behind some of the hurt, some of the pain, some of the disappointment that we inherit from this life, from past lives, from our DNA line, and saying, but I'm a new start, and I don't have to follow these patterns. There's a powerful revelation of self here that is balancing the scales and that is moving you forward, away from the negativity, away from kind of this wide-eyed beauty of, oh, well, everybody wants to wish you well, and everybody means their best. And it's like, okay, you can think that everybody does their best, and sometimes they do. But sometimes people's best is also in accordance with trying to take advantage and trying to get what they want out of life. And that's where your radiance comes in. And that's where your power and your change comes forward. And it's like, no, but this is me. And I get to stay steadfast in my truth, in my passion, in my brilliance, in my love. And this is a no-nonsense moon for you. I mean, you're really taking the bull by the horns here. So let's see. How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2024 moon? How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2024 moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh, and show me clearly. So let's... All right, I'm going to put this on the bottom. Okay. Libra. How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Libra be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. And spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Okay. So we have fruition, acceptance, reverse, which is interesting, and sovereignty. Then we have the sacred masculine coming forward. You and your loved ones are safe. Hold your vision. Adjustments are required. A new romantic cycle begins. There you show up, Libra, with the, the new moon in Libra. And take time to breathe out. Okay. Fruition. What you focus on comes to fruition. It's with your hard work and it's with the embrace of the grace of the Queen of Pentacles, of what you desire on this earth really coming forward. Acceptance reverse with the Wheel of Fortune. It's going to be hard to accept to accept the changes that are coming. It's like, oh my gosh, can I move forward this way? Do I know what it is that I want? It's the day and the night coming together. And it's like, can I do this? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's going to take time to accept the changes that come forward, but it's not going to be it's not going to be impossible. You're just going to have to be patient with yourself. And then you have the sovereignty. So you, what I love here is that you have that coming together of the masculine and feminine energy again. You have the sovereignty, you have, which is the queen of the moon, and then you have the masculine, which is the lunar god. So you have the queen of the moon and the lunar god coming together. And it's like this moon balances the masculine and the feminine inside of you. And it calls upon both those aspects of strength, the more kind of subtle aspect of, of the feminine strength and the more forceful, maybe more easy to recognize strength of the masculine coming forward. And you're becoming a student of this sovereignty, of this graceful energy that is around you. So it does not matter how you identify yourself. It matters that you embrace this grace. And as you do so, when you kind of take a breather, from, from the war of life. And then you see that things are really moving forward. You embrace the masculine energy that lets you, you know, rise with that testosterone, you know, induced stamina and say, okay, I can fight this. I can move forward like this. I have this physical strength 
to keep on going, but you also have the mental strength to keep on going. And it brings you to, you and your loved ones are safe, to this prosperity of love that says all is well. Stop worrying. It doesn't mean that you will stop life from happening, like everything will just be hunky-dory and, you know, like that. It means that there is security around you. There are your angels guarding you and blessing you. Stop. Breathe. Let the light shine through. Hold to your vision of what you want and do not let the negativity that was spoken over you when you were small, okay, by a parent, by a guardian, by an aunt, an uncle, a, a grandparent, by, you know, siblings or kids at school or lovers, don't let them knock you down, knock you off your path. Hold to your vision of what you want from your life, your soul, yourself. And adjustments are required. As you take this gift and as you claim this gift, there is an adjustment of saying, I deserve it. There is an adjustment of saying, well, how do I utilize this? How do I use it? And then as you have this adjustment come in, a new romantic cycle begins with the Taurus energy, with the full moon in Taurus, with love becoming part of your life more openly, more honestly, with a sense, now this can be a falling in love, but this is also of embracing love, of embracing what your heart wants, of saying, I am falling in love with my love, my soul, myself, my grace, my abundance. I'm falling in love with me. And as you do so, take time out to breathe, to balance the scales. And to just be. Your subconscious. Luna message for this time. Is resilience. You're carrying the world tree on your back. You're carrying your world tree on your back. You are more resilient. You are more powerful than you think. And you have not broken. And you will not break or fail or flounder. It leads you to the new moon in Pisces. Saying meditate and contemplate. Take time out to breathe, to focus on your breath, to focus on what you want, whether that be sitting in meditation, whether that be going for a walk, whether that be, you know, journaling. Take time out and contemplate what it is that you desire and how it is that you bring the spiritual and the practical aspects of yourself together to move forward in the power of your existence. And then we have the Three of Swords. So we have a repeat of the number three, with the Three of Cups and the Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is your heartbreak, your pain, and your disappointment, your anger, your upset, your upheaval, denials. These are the heartbreaks that shape us. And your subconscious is saying, instead of putting them on the shelf and saying, this will define me, and but I will also hide from it. And as long as I don't look at it full on, it will never really sink its claws into me. No, it will sink its claws into you even more if you don't face it. This is looking at the heartbreak, the pain, the disappointment, and saying, you don't have control over me anymore. I embrace my grace, my love, my passion, and my truth. Wow, Libra, this is an empowering time for you. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we move forward in the balance of the masculine and feminine energy that powers and fuels us in this world. As we claim our bounty and know that our hard work is not for nothing, that we are graced as we move forward and we're stepping into our wealth, seeing connections that were never there before or that were so easily overlooked and now empowering ourselves to move forward in true bounty, true grace, and true abundance. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Libra.